All right, new tonight, we are talking severe weather in tornadoes. As we get into spring and then early summer, we're entering severe weather season, but a new study from the American Meteorological Society shows an interesting pattern. The U.S. has not seen an EF5 tornado in nearly 12 years. That's the longest drought on record. So are tornadoes getting weaker or is something else happening? For that, we turn to StormTrack 8 meteorologist, Andrew Stetsky. Andrew, thanks for being with here with us. Hey, thanks for having me on. All right, I have to start off with this because I told people we were doing this interview and the number one question I got back was, why do we care? Isn't it a good thing if there aren't EF5s? Right, yeah, you would think so. It's like, hallelujah, did we finally break a code and things are getting better, maybe less violent, less dangerous? And it does not appear that that is the case. We wish it was, but it is not. We are still seeing some relatively stronger tornadoes from time to time. The thing that's changed is how we're measuring these tornadoes. Are we using the same measurements that we did, say, 20, 15 years ago? The answer is no. Mm. We know construction standards have changed. The way homes are being built has changed, buildings and likewise. So we kind of have to keep up with that modernization of construction. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning then, and let's talk about how our tornado is even rated. Yeah, exactly. So right now we use the enhanced Fujita scale uh, that was brought into place early February of 2007. Before then, it was just the Fujita scale, and that used a totally different set of measurements. It used wind speed estimations. Well, right now, with the enhanced Fujita scale, not only are we still estimating wind speeds, but we're actually looking at the damage. Was a house completely swept off its foundation, or was it just heavily damaged? So there's a lot more factors that go into this enhanced Fujita scale versus what we were using prior to 2007. So can you just give us an overview of what is the differences of how we measured tornadoes in 2006 versus 2025? Yeah, so it's all about the advances in technology. Back in 2006, we didn't have all these fancy radars and all this other stuff to help us estimate wind speeds other than holding a wind speed measurement device in our hand and chucking it out there and seeing what it was measuring. Now we have all these extra tools that we can use to estimate wind speeds and actually measure wind speeds too. So that scale had to change to keep up with technology, but I think one thing that the authors of this study found is that we didn't consider what that change would do in terms of how many strong tornadoes we would be counting after the scale had changed. Okay, so when we talk about the scale, the new way that we look at this is we also take into account home construction and the way that homes are built now more sturdy. Is that a fair way of saying that? Exactly. Yeah, we have a lot of home construction standards that vary across the country. And of course, in the last couple of decades, those standards have improved. We have a lot more stricter building codes and things like that. So nowadays, it's theoretically a lot harder to knock a home off its foundation than it may have been several decades ago with these newer types of construction. So it's more difficult, if you will. So because of that, in order to maintain some consistency in the data, it appears we need some more adjusting with this new EF scale because there's been cases where you know, researchers with this particular study have found if we would have done a little adjusting with this scale, we wouldn't be in this long decade plus drought of EF5 tornadoes. In reality, the case has been that you know, with this change, we could have seen at least a dozen mm -hmm. tornadoes in the last decade that would have been rated EF5 otherwise. So I just wanna make sure I'm getting this right. Let's say in 2006, if a home would have been wiped off its foundation, it probably would have been categorized as an EF5. Easily. Today, that same tornado could hit a house in the same location and maybe not wipe it off its foundation, so we maybe wouldn't mark it as an EF5, and that's kind of what the difference is? Exactly, and you could have the same wind speed involved with both, but you could still get a different rating. So that's why there's all this confusion. We don't have consistent standards when it comes to rating these EF5 tornadoes. We seem to be keep making exceptions to these rules. So a lot of confusion, and a lot of mismatch of that data. So then what's next? Is the data gonna become more streamlined? So I'm glad you asked. So back in 2022, uh, researchers are going over the possibility of further enhancing this scale uh, to match it up with what we're seeing with damage on the ground. There's nothing finalized yet that is still kind of in the research phase, but there's hope that in the not so distant future, we're going to see this scale adjusted a little bit more to reflect the reality of what is actually going on. That yes, we have likely seen some EF5 tornadoes, even though they haven't been classified as such just based on the damage alone. The other exciting thing about this new scale that they're working on, it's going to incorporate radar wind speeds. We can measure wind speeds with radar data quite easily now compared to the past. So the fact that we can add in more data to this just overall enhances its accuracy. All right, Andrew, before I let you go, 
when can we expect to see tornadoes this year? <laughs> Good question. Everybody always wants to know. A lot of <laughs> folks are, are terrified of tornadoes and rightfully slow. Um, everything that we've looked at data-wise, it appears it's going to be a little bit of a later start to severe weather season. So you may remember last year around this time in March, we already had some tornadoes um, that were logged here in the Quad Cities. This year, it's probably going to be a little bit more of a longer wait, but we still expect, yeah, we are going to see some tornado act activity in the weeks and months ahead. And you guys will be ready for it. That's right. We'll be tracking it all the way. <laughs> Andrew, thank you so much. Because at home, Andrew has written up a whole article on this tornado topic, and you can find it by going to WQAD.com and clicking on the As Seen on TV tab.